Okay, we are live. We're doing a recording here to do a kind of a makeup for a class that is not convenient to teach this week. And the topic is Young Public Servant for a Day. Young Public Servant for a Day. Oh, I didn't turn on my lights, but that's all right because I'm going to be small this time. Young public servant for a day. Uh, before we go too far, if you checked the e-board, you would have seen that there were some notes, and the notes are up here. Let me read them to you. It might be a little small for you. You should try to read this page before watching this video, the second video for this week. Opening question to think about. In this paper, how young is young? Notice the topic is, whoops, young, public servant for a day. So, how young is young? Well, you'll have to read about halfway through before you get a pretty good idea. And in fact, even then, it might be a little challenging for you because, well, the description they give doesn't match very well the description that fits for other countries. And that's part of the purpose here is to get you thinking more globally, more broadly, looking at things that are a little bit different than what you would usually think about. So we'll click that. Young public servant for a day. Back to my text. How young is young? Deeper questions, the kinds of things you could see on a test. So you want to be ready to discuss this reading on three different levels, three different levels or depths. How deeply do you read into this and how deeply do you think about this? The first one is your topic. What is this about? What's the main concept? What's the thema, some people say? Why did the author write this paper? Where was it written? You might have a hard time figuring that one out. Who are the intended readers? You might not know that one. So during this talk, I will explain the topic a little deeper. Number two, vocabulary. What are the key words in this reading? And what do those words mean? Again, I'm assuming that there's going to be words here you don't know. There's going to be words here I need to explain. But also I'm going to give you some ideas how you can find the meaning of words when you are not familiar with them. So you should, be, you should choose 7 to 10 words that you want to know more about. And you can ask me questions later. Be ready to explain what words mean. This is a kind of a homework. No, I'm not checking it. Not this time. But you want to think about what are these words and look a little deeper. Do a little homework for yourself. Now, you might not have done that. Maybe you didn't do that before this video. But in general, when you are reading, you want to mark a few words, not all the words, a few words that you want to look up and find out. But a good vocabulary strategy is to read ahead. Read two or three more sentences See if you can make a good guess. What does that word mean? Sometimes we learn the meaning of a word in context. In context. All right? In context means that we can understand the meaning because of the thing we're talking about, the meanings around it. So we can say that it is in context. All right? We find the meaning in context. And then if you can't, you look them up in the dictionary. 
be careful because sometimes words have more than one meaning. And the meaning that you find in a dictionary might not match the context of what you're reading. might be the wrong meaning. Just like we have words that are spelled the same but have different meanings that you learned very early, like saw to cut wood, and saw the past of see, today I see, yesterday I saw. There's lots of words that have this problem. How many meanings for dong in Korean? Digot o yung, dong. How many meanings? There must be at least five, right? So we have this problem of words that have similar meanings or the same meanings, but we also have problems of words that look the same but have very different meanings. Number three, discussion. Be ready to talk about this. Do you agree with the concept in this article, the idea that this article talks about? Is it good for you? Would it work in Korea? Is it needed? Or would it be useful in Korea? Does it already exist in Korea? And of course, with the discussion, we don't only say our thinking, we have to be able to say why or why not. So, first of all, when we're looking at vocabulary, one thing we can always do is look it up in a dictionary, as I mentioned. Well, we have online dictionaries, and I've got that here for us. That's one of the things we can do is use Google Translate, Naver Translate, Babelfish, whichever you want to use. So let's get started. Young public servant for a day. For a day means just for one day. A program designed to learn more about the public service and public servants. Now, you've heard me comment before about public servant, the servant mind. And if you've had other classes like with Professor Bach, They'll often talk about uh, servant leadership. So, public servant, one who serves. You are the master. I am just your servant. Okay. I have a mind where I feel like I am not so powerful, not so noble. My job is to serve you. And the public service is a broader idea. When we are translating the word hengjeong, we often translate it as uh, public administration. But in Korea, public administration, when they think about that, when they think about hengjeong, they think about government service. But here we're going to understand that public service is more than just government service. Public service includes things outside of government, but where you serve a wider public, a wider community. So, for example, a church that serves meals to the poor people or any uh, senior citizens organization that's not limited only to our club members but serves a wider population that serves the public, that's public service. So, NGOs, churches, and Sometimes we interpret private for-profit organizations as public service. Uh, that one's a little bit more tough. But for example, city buses in Korea are almost always private companies that have some kind of contract with the city. The city pays a certain amount or promises a certain amount, collect money from the bus riders, and then we will top it up, we'll load it up, we'll make sure you make at least this much money. So in this case, those private bus companies are doing public service. All right, so it could be contracted private services. So what is the public service? It is things, organizations, people that work to serve the public. All right. Next, it says, summary of the article by Anne-Marie Lefay and Gaetan Lebeau. Well, why would we do this? Let me scroll down to the bottom of the page. 
and we can see I wrote in pencil public sector management that's the proper name for this magazine over here we just see management volume 13 number two I'm off the screen right um, public sector man management is a magazine by IPAC in Canada okay there's our first hint Canada you probably know that in Canada, they use two languages. The country is officially legally bilingual, English and French. And under French law, uh, under Canadian law, excuse me, under Canadian law, if they're spending government money, everything has to be in two languages. It doesn't mean everything has to be exactly translation, perfectly the same balance. In fact, this magazine has some articles originally in English with a French translation and some articles originally in French with an English translation. And in this magazine, the translated version is shorter. It is a summary. The article, the main article here is actually three pages in French, but only one page in English. So if you're still not sure, summary under Google Translate says Yoyak. It could be Yoyak, it could be Geo, it could be Alim. There's many possible translations. But basically it means to take a longer story and take the key points and create a shorter story that gives us all the important information but cuts out some of the less important information. Okay, so that's an example of using an online dictionary to find a word. And of course, technically, you could copy-paste this whole article and drop it into your translation and get a translation. That's legal in my class. I don't mind. When we talk, we're going to talk in English. But if you want to use some other system to help you understand, that's okay for me. All right. My key point is that you can talk about our things in English. So a young public servant for a day. How young is young is my question. Here's our opening paragraph. And it's hard. Okay, it's hard. Following in the footsteps of IPAC Regional Group of Regina, the Institute well, let's do it in French. The Institut d'Administration Publique de Grand Montréal, IAPGM, created in 1998 the Programme Jeune Fonctionnaire d'un jour, Young Public Servant for a Day, to provide students of the Montreal community with an idea of some of the interesting careers that exist in the public service, to showcase public management, and to convey that public services can be an exciting place to work. This is a huge sentence. It's so long. And it has two parentheses, maybe four commas. It's probably 60 words. Incredible. So we're going to take about 10 minutes to break this down into pieces. Following in the footsteps. Okay. Usually I do this in the classroom and I use a lot of body language, but this camera won't allow it so well. I'm going to try. Footsteps. Imagine there's a lot of snow outside and there are three people walking. The first person is walking in the snow. <laughs> And he makes these big holes in the snow where his foot goes. Person number two is walking next to person number one. And he is also making these big holes in the snow. And it's a lot of work to walk in the snow. Any of our guys who've been in the army, maybe they had to march in the snow. They know it's tough work to be first. But the third person is walking behind the first person. And he's walking very carefully to try to step exactly where the first person stepped. 
because the snow is already smooshed down and it will be much easier. So he is walking in the footsteps in the same place that his number one walked. He's walking in the footsteps. So walking in the footsteps or following in the footsteps means to be careful to try to go the same way. Walking in the footsteps. Following in the footsteps of the IPAC regional group of Regina. Okay, Regina is a city in Canada. A city or an area. Okay, it's a city. IPAC is the name of this organization. The Institute of Public Administration in Canada. Institute Public Administration Canada, IPAC. The IPAC, following in the footsteps of the IPAC Regional Group of Regina. So we're going to try to copy, to emulate, to do the same thing as the IPAC group that's in Regina, the Institut d'Administration Publique de Grand Montréal. Okay. This is in French because Montreal is a city in Quebec province. And in Quebec province, the first language is French and the second language is English. So the name of the professional group is written in French. So Institut Administration Public du Grand Montreal means the Public Administration Institute of Grand Montreal or Greater Montreal. In French, Grand means big, great, greater. And we're going to talk about Grand in just a moment. So it's really IPAC Montreal, but the name has been changed to be French. And instead of saying regional group, they called it Greater Montreal or Grand Montreal. Okay, so following in the group from Regina, Canada, the same type of group in Montreal created in 1998, the program Jeune Fonctionnaire d'un jour, which in English right after it, the Young Public Servant for a Day, to provide students, to give students of the Montreal community an idea. Okay, the English is a little funny here, to provide with. An idea of some of the interesting careers that exist in the public service. So, if you work in the public service, what can you do? What are the kinds of careers? We don't just say, oh, I'm a gongmuan, I'm a public servant, uh, I work for City Hall. Well, some people do. But when you're in City Hall, what do you do? What is your job? What is your specialty? Do you specialize with accounting or finance? Do you specialize with the fire department or uh, the public library? What is your area? Okay, And that can be a career. Career sounds like 20 years of work. Not just my job today, but probably what's my next job, my next job. Yes, it's true. Many public servants don't have a specialty and they kind of move from place to place to place, especially early in their career. But many other public servants do have a specialty, and that's what we're talking about. Okay, But even so, just to be a public servant and work for 25 years or 30 years in the Minwenshil, uh, uh, the uh, Public Service Center, it's a kind of a specialty. It's a kind of a of a career path. 25 years working to serve citizens in the Inwanshil, issuing registers of birth and certificates like that. All right. So to provide students of the Montreal community with an idea of some of the interesting careers that exist in the public service, and to showcase public management, to showcase. Okay, showcase is one of these words that became a verb, became a to-do, I can do, I-N-G, 
showcasing, it became that from the noun, the thing. So imagine a trophy case, a cabinet with glass front on the wall at your high school that showed all the prizes the school has got. That's a trophy case. Or you go to the jeweler shop, you want to look at rings and watches, and they have these big glass cabinets where you can look down and see all the beautiful diamonds. That glass case is a showcase. We're showing you inside a cabinet or a case. So a showcase is a cabinet or a construction that helps you to see things. That's the noun. Now we make a verb and say, we want to showcase. We want to make easy and safe to see something. And here, we want to show off, make easy to see public management. Okay, public management is very similar to public administration. The idea is a little bit different. It sounds more like we get things done. Okay, in English, management often sounds like getting something done. And many people feel administration sounds like doing paperwork. Okay, in English, administration has often has often a negative feeling. It's just paperwork. It's not useful. Many people feel that way. So that's the problem. Okay? So to showcase public management means to show off how government gets things done and how the public service gets things done, how the library gets things done, how a hospital gets things done if it's a public hospital, or maybe if it's a private hospital, but we feel like it's in the public service. To showcase public management and to convey, convey means to carry, right? To carry on your shoulder or to carry this way. To carry, to convey a message, okay? To carry a message that public services can be an exciting place to work, okay? One more time, let's walk through this. Following in the steps of IPAC Regional Group Regina, the Institute of Administration Publique de Grand Montréal created in 1998 the Programme Jeune Fonctionnaire d'un jour, Young Public Servant for a Day, to provide students of the Montreal community with an idea of some of the interesting careers that exist in the public service. Okay, so first, all right? to give students an idea of the interesting careers that exist in public service. And then second, to showcase public management. And third, to convey, to carry the idea that public services can be an exciting place to work. That's the first paragraph. That is the topic paragraph that tells you what this article is about. Now, Grand Montreal, Greater Montreal. I made a picture of Daegu area to help explain this idea. Uh, it's kind of a little dangerous to talk about Grand and Greater and all because in Korea, they tend to use a label differently than we do in English. So here we're talking about Greater Daegu, Metropolitan Daegu, whoops, Politan Daegu, and Daegu and Metropolitan City, which in Korean you would say uh, Daegu Gwangyeokshi. Right? Daegu Gwangyeokshi. These are three different things. How are they different? Well, let me move this off to the side here and open up a picture. When we talk about, where's my picture? Where's my picture? Uh, when we talk about Greater Daegu, we're talking about a very broad area. When I talk about 
greater Daegu, I'm really thinking about something like 110 or 160 kilometers from downtown. And why do I say 110 or 160? Well, it kind of goes back to two ideas. One is in the olden days of TV, before cable, and even going back to radio, to the olden days of radio, how far could you be from the radio station and or the TV station and still watch it? Of course, you could have better antenna, better radio, spend a lot of money. But there was this idea that if you were somewhere between 100 or 160 kilometers from the antenna, that's about as far as you could be to still watch it. Okay? Of course, mountains make an effect. But there's this idea of radio and TV as being the outer limits. The important point here is it means you feel some connection. You feel some connection with Daegu because you watch Daegu TV. In the same way, we can talk about commuting distance. Remember, we talked about commute a few weeks ago. It is the person who travels back and forth routinely, basically daily, from their home to work. So how far can you commute on a daily basis to get to work? Most people don't want to travel more than about an hour, maybe an hour 30, but really most people are within an hour. Well, if we look at that 100 kilometer or 160 kilometer range, we're back to the same idea. If you have a good road, an expressway, a highway, you can do 160 kilometers in about 90 minutes. And if the roads are not so good, you can probably do 100 kilometers in more than an hour. But, but that's kind of the outer limit. All right? If you're doing 100 kilometers per hour on the, on the expressway, then it's about an hour and a half, something like that. Uh, it's not precise. But this is kind of a feel. So in this circle, I have a, uh, in this map, I have a green circle because that's as big as I could make this uh, picture and still be understandable. But if we look at it, we can see that it takes us up near to the Gumi area. Uh, people from Gumi can, can travel down the expressway, no problem. Uh, exactly what, you know, the city on the, Marking on this Google map may not be exactly what you think of as the city. But we've got Gumi over here somewhere. We've got Sungju over here somewhere. And if we're all the way over here, I have to move this out of the way. We can just barely see that Gyeongju is right down here at the very edge. So we would probably include Gyeongju in our 100 kilometers 150 kilometers, 160 kilometers commute range. And I used to work in Gyeongju, and I can assure you that it's not that far. And it's uh, depending on traffic, you can do it in less than an hour. So it's certainly commute range. And in Daegu, uh, in Gyeongju, they watch Daegu TV. So we would call this Greater Daegu. The idea that I'm connected to the city. Now that's different from Daegu Metropolitan City and Metropolitan Daegu. Daegu Metropolitan City, Daegu Gwangyeokshi, is a government designed boundary. And I'm lazy and I'm not a good artist, so I just made a pink line to give us an idea of what are the boundaries of Daegu Metropolitan City. Okay? It's not right. We know it's not right, but it gives you an idea. Down here is this end where it's uh, uh, Dalsagu. Dalsagu is technically part of Daegu Metropolitan City. Right? And it goes up, it goes around. There's, there's different angles, but basically that's it. And what I want to point to here is that 
Daegu Metropolitan City ends, and Gyeongsan Shi Gyeongsan City begins. And I don't know exactly where the line is, but I do know that a lot of Daegu buses go to Gyeongsan, and the subway now goes to Gyeongsan to to Yeongnam Day, to Yeongnam University, without paying attention to that city line. And this is the key point. Daegu Metropolitan City is a government line. All right, and it is the pink line, and it goes like that. But Metropolitan Daegu has very different boundaries. Metropolitan Daegu is this blue line. I'm not really sure where to draw a line up here, so I made kind of a dotted line. But what we see with Metropolitan Daegu is that Gyeongsan City, the, the part of it that is more like city, is included. But another part of Gyeongsan City over here, the more countryside, is not included. Why? Metropolitan means feels like a big city. Metropolitan means we have a lot of tall buildings. We have a lot of buildings close together. Feels like big city. Metropolitan sounds like big city. If you watched Superman or you've read Superman cartoons, you know that Superman's city was Metropolis. Because metropolis means big city. So metropolitan means big city Daegu. So we are including Gyeongsan. Maybe some people would include the Chilgokun area where there's lots of apartments because lots of people commute into Daegu. So maybe some people would. Maybe some people would not because there's not very much between those Chilgokun apartments and Daegu. So that's why the line is kind of broken. Maybe you would include this area, maybe not. All right. And we keep going up and there's there's pockets. There's pockets of lots of apartments and then there's a pocket up here. And of course there's Gumi way up here. Sungju over here doesn't have much. And nobody would include and it's a long way of nothing. So nobody would include Sungju inside Metropolitan Daegu. Where does Metropolitan Daegu end. I don't know. There's some farms. Then we get out there to that area where there are a couple of universities. Uh, what? Daegu University, uh, Daegu Catholic, uh, Kyungil University is up here somewhere, I think. But they feel more countryside. So uh, there's a long gap of farms and countryside area before we get to the next lots of people. So Metropolitan Daegu doesn't have precise lines, just kind of feeling. But you can see that Metropolitan Daegu in blue and Daegu Metropolitan City in pink are very much different. So that is our issue. Now, Metropolitan uh, Grand Montreal, Greater Montreal, would have this feeling. It's more than just the city of Montreal. It inclu includes areas outside it. Just like we know that Kyungsan is actually in a province not part of the metropolitan city. Okay, This is very normal in North America. The, the cities aren't quite so big. There's lots of smaller cities around it. Okay, So a city like Gyeongsan is called a suburb. Suburb. And a suburb basically means sub, less than, dependent on, urban. Urban being big city. So suburb is often called a bedroom community because it means people sleep there but then they go into the city to work not everybody but a lot so if I work in Gyeongsan but I or maybe let's say I work in Chilgok I live in Chilgok I sleep in Chilgok my wife sleeps in Chilgok but I come to Daegu every day my wife stays in Chugok and she shops in Chugok. She buys fuel, she buys food, she buys clothes. Well, somebody has to work in those stores. Somebody has to work at the gas station. Those people who work in Chugok to serve my family, they don't commute. Right? But they are part of this suburb. 
So it doesn't mean everybody in the suburb works in the city, but it means there is a community or a city, a group of people living together outside the city, but it's somehow dependent. A lot of the income for this city, or in this case, Chugokun is a county, a lot of the income here comes from people who work here. Okay, a suburb. So that's a suburb. Urban means big city. And then the last choice is rural. Whoops. I can't type. Rural, which means countryside. Okay. Rural equals countryside, country feeling. So as you're moving out towards Yongchun and out towards Gyeongdu, there's lots of farms and places where there's a few houses here and there and nothing else. And we would call that rural. All right. So that's enough of that. We can close this. And we can... No. And we can close this because we don't need it anymore. We're back to the reading. Wow. We're almost 40 minutes. And we've only done one paragraph. Yeah, the first paragraph is very loaded. It's got a lot of stuff in it. But after that, it gets much easier. All right. Participating students, students who are joining, right? Participating students accompany a public sector employee, who's called the sponsor, in the course of his or her regular working day. A company to come together, side by side, not following behind exactly. It doesn't say following. It says accompanying. So sounds more like together kind of partners, or if I'm behind, I'm only a little behind. Okay, Participating students accompany a public sector employee. Public sector, we said, not just public, the city, but things that feel like they serve the public, public sector. In fact, some people include newspapers as public sector because they provide a public service, a public good. Participating students accompany a public sector employee who's called the sponsor in the course of his or her regular working day, in the course, throughout, following along, to learn about the structure and operations of the host organization. The structure, how is it built? What's the design? What's the hierarchy? What's the organizational chart? Where's the bathroom? And the operations, what do they do of the host organization? So if I'm going to the fire department, Tell me about the fire department. Tell me how it works. Am I working in a fire station or am I working in the fire department headquarters? But tell me about this organization. As much as possible, the sponsor involves the student in activities related to his or her regular tasks. Regular task, regular job, regular duties, regular things he does. As much as possible, the sponsor involves the student in activities related to his or her regular task to help the student gain a better understanding of the functions to be performed. I don't just tell you. We don't bring 30 people into a room and talk about what we do. Come with me. Sit with me. Watch what I do. Join me. So, for example... If I am working at the Citizen Service Center, the Minwanshil, and I sit at my desk and I make birth certificates and things like that, and a woman comes in with her baby, and she has her baby, and she says, I need to register my baby, I'm the staff, I say, okay, I'll help you with that. I have a young public servant for a day with me. Is it okay if he sits and listens? And she says, uh, yeah, it's okay. okay. He won't take notes. He won't write your private information. Fine. So he can sit and watch and listen while I collect information and type the information and do everything we need to do. I'm doing my regular job. Okay. Now the student understands what I did. It's not just watching me from a distance, but sitting and listening and listening to questions. And maybe if I do the same thing many times in a day, I might let the student 
sit at the computer and type the information for me. Maybe. He can't do my job. She can't do my job. But the student can learn by watching what I do. Okay, so who are the host organizations? Host organizations include federal department, okay? Federal, Korea is not a federal government. Korea is a unitary government. Federal means that the states or provinces have some independence, some autonomy from the national government or central government. Canada, United States, Switzerland, Germany, these are federal governments where there are things the national government cannot tell the local governments, you must do this. The, the local governments have some autonomy, some freedom to do things even the national government doesn't like, right? So Donald Trump is president of the U.S. federal government, but he's not president of California. And sometimes the governor of California can say, no, go away. We're doing it our way. And Trump can't do anything. Maybe he can control a little bit of money, but states have a lot of freedom. All right, so federal departments would be the national government level. Provincial ministries, municipal organizations or services, municipal. Municipal means the lowest level of government. In Daegu, it would mean the gu, the guchung, or the gun, the guncheng. Or the Kunyangshi, the ordinary city, not a Gwangyokshi, not a metropolitan city, but an ordinary city, like Gumi, like I live in Miriang, right? So we have a the lowest level of government that would be municipal. City, county, but not metropolitan. Or some cities have a, a lower level, which in New York and uh, Chicago, they call them wards and things like that. Municipal organizations or services, health and social service institutions. Now, these could be uh, like the Red Cross. It could be like a YMCA, right? Organizations that perform services. Could be a nonprofit hospital. Could even be a for-profit hospital, right? health and social services institutions, and parapublic agencies. Okay, parapublic is a challenge. We don't use this word much in English, and you don't use it in Korea at all, I don't think. Para, para means half or partial, incomplete, not perfect. So parapublic will be organizations that are not public, but people often think that it's public. For example, when you ride the city bus. You imagine it's a city bus, and you think, well, yeah, you know, it's a city service, and if they don't do a good job, I'm going to call City Hall. But in fact, it's a private business doing work for the public with some kind of relationship with the government, but it's actually private. Parapublic agencies. Last April, April of the year this paper was written, some 73 ministries. Some means about, not exactly. Some 73 ministries and public organizations in metropolitan Montreal. Metropolitan, remember we said grand or greater? Eh, we're using the word loosely. Metropolitan Montreal gave 500 young public servants for a day the opportunity to explore more than 100 different professions or careers. So, for example, to be a fireman or firefighter would be a profession. Being a postal service worker would be a profession or a career, however you want to define it. Being a nurse, being a doctor, being a clerk in a hospital, these are all different professions or careers. Being a subway driver or working in the subway management office. This program, the uh, Young, Public for, Young Public Servant for a Day program, was originally launched. Launch means to start, to begin. We launch a ship when we push it off into the water for the first time. This program was originally launched or started as a pilot project. Has been very successful and very well received by schools, students, and host organizations. Okay, a pilot 
is not exactly the guy who flies the plane. In the sea with ships, the pilot is kind of a guide who, when the ship is coming to the harbor, coming into near land, the ship's captain doesn't know the exact details of this harbor well. So another person comes from the land onto the ship to guide. So a pilot is a guide. A pilot project is when we do something for the first time as a tryout, as a test. We're not sure it's going to work. So we're going to do it small. We're not going to spend too much money. And then if it works well, we can tell everybody, hey, hey, this is really good. This works. So let's do it again. Let's do it bigger. So a pilot project is a kind of a test or experiment because we know that it worked in Regina, in that other city, which is much smaller. So we're going to try it here in Montreal, a tryout. We're just going to try it with a few people, maybe maybe a uh, uh, hundred students and, and 30 ministries or something like that. Uh, we're going to try it out and see how it works. That's a pilot project. So the program was originally launched as a pilot project. It has been quite successful and very well received by schools, students, and host organizations. Receives mean it came to me and I like it. So it received means I got it. You throw the ball and I receive it. I catch it. I'm sorry, you can't see in my hand. You throw the ball and I catch it. Okay, I receive it. Well received means I caught it well. In this case, it means you send it to me and yeah, I like it. It's great. Okay. It has now become a regular activity of the Institute for Public Administration in Greater Montreal, whose focus, okay, IAPGM, whose focus, this one's not clear, this is not well written, okay, a regular activity of IAPGM whose focus has consistently been, okay, so the focus, the main worry of IAPGM has consistently, always keep it going, the focus has been on high quality standards. Okay, we don't want to do lousy, we don't want to do lazy, we don't do poorly, we want to do it top quality. High quality standards, good program planning, and good management tools. Okay, good program planning and management tools. So, management tools are the things we use in management and good program planning. So, we're analyzing this. We're not just doing it halfway, but we're really thinking about what we're doing. We're checking what we're doing. Okay. Performance indicators. So how can we know if we're doing well? Do well. How's my performance? Am I doing good? I need some kind of sign. An indicator is a signal. When you're driving and you want to turn left and you turn on the turn signal, tickle, 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 tickle. We call that a turn indicator. Okay. It is some kind of a sign or symbol that shows performance, how you're doing. How do I know if I'm doing well? I need performance indicators. Okay, They've been very concerned, back again, right? Con the focus has consistently been on appropriate assessment tools. So assessment means measure, pyongga. So what kind of thing can I use to find out if I'm doing well? Okay, some tools we might use might not be very good. If I test you in this semester on finance, money, well, it's not a very good, it's not a very appropriate assessment tool because we haven't talked about finance, right? So the tools I use to measure have to be good tools, the right tools, appropriate tools, tools that fit, okay? And the focus has been on a constant effort to reach goals within financial limits. So if I have a lot of money, I can do lots of things. But if you tell me that my budget is 5,001 for my lunch, then I need to spend only 5,000 won or less on my lunch. If I spend 7,000 won on my lunch, you might say, no, I'm giving you 5,000 won and you lose 2,000. Uh, so tell me what my financial limits are. Tell me what my goal is. I want you to do 
200 of these things and I'm giving you 2 million won. Okay, how can I do 200 things with 2 million won? What's, what's the best way to do that? So how hard do I work in order to reach that? It's not okay to spend 2 million won and only do 100 things. It's not okay to spend 3 million won to do 200 things. I need to figure out a way, I need to keep working a constant effort to figure out how to do 200 things with 2 million one. Constant effort to reach goals inside, within my financial limits. Okay, so how do we know we're successful? We've, we've created uh, performance indicators and assessment tools. Now, what's the difference? Performance indicator sounds like while I'm working, what can I see to know I'm doing well? And assessment tool sounds like, well, at the end or near the end. Okay? The success of the program has also been demonstrated by a high participation rate of volunteers. If we can't find students to join, then or, you know, participants, we said young, I'm guessing students, if we can't find lots of people to join, maybe we're doing something wrong. Maybe people are talking in the high school friends, oh, don't go there, that's terrible, it's no good, we did it before, and it was a yuck, right? So we must be doing good because lots of people want to join. It is also on a voluntary basis, okay, people are volunteering, that administrators and professionals of IAPGM Okay, so this group has public administrators and professionals. I didn't mention that before, but this IPAC or IAPGM is not just a professor society. It's not a gyosu uh, hakwe. It's not a scholarly society only. It's a mix. It has working professionals, people who are public servants, right? who join IPAC, I-A-P-G-M, uh, IPAC Regina, IPAC All Canada. They join because they feel like I'm a professional, I want to be with other professionals, I want to learn more about my profession. If I learn more, maybe I get a promotion. So it's not just a bunch of professors. There's a lot of practitioners, practitioners, people who are working in the field, who are joining here. And in fact, this article is written by people who are practitioners, not researchers, not professors. So the success of the program has also been demonstrated by a high, high participation rate of volunteers. It is also on a voluntary basis, volunteers, that administrators and, prof and professionals of IPGM decide to activate their contact networks to contribute to the search for mentoring opportunities. Okay, so first, mentoring opportunities means ch good chances for these volunteers to come in and learn. Trying to find the host organizations and the host staff. Okay, but administrators, we're talking about higher level government workers, higher level managers in hospitals and churches and YMCA decide to activate their contact networks. So what is a contact network? Well, in your phone, you have a telephone list. Uh, in my phone, it's called contacts. Right here, you can't see very well. My picture is very small. But somewhere out here, you, nah, you can't see it. But it says contacts, and it has phone numbers and emails and things like that. In the olden days, we used a Rolodex. It was a big tray or roll circle wheel where we could put cards. We could put business cards, and I could put this guy's business card and this guy's business card and this guy's business card. I could put a hundred or five hundred cards on this Rolodex. So when I'm trying to think of somebody, I can look it up and go, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, that is this person at this business, whatever. So here when we say activate, it means to use 
or to turn it on, to make it work. There are contact networks. You can think about their contacts in their phone or their Rolodex. They're activating their contact networks. They are reaching out to people they know and saying, hey, last year I was a host for a high school student who came to follow me for one day, young public servant for a day. It was wonderful. The kid was great. I had a good time. It was really nice to be able to show people what we do. You should do it too. I'm really recommending it to you. And here's the contact information, or I'll contact them for you and tell them to call you if you agree. Okay? So, Because the IAPGM maybe doesn't know my friend who is a manager at this other organization. So I tell my friend, I am using my contact network. I'm stretching out the contacts. I activate my contact networks to contribute to the search for mentoring opportunities. I'm going to help IAPGM find more chances for young people. Okay, finally we're going to find out what are young? Who are young? Now in its fourth year, 2001-2002, this is an old magazine, the program, uh, Young Public Servant for a Day, plans to organize 750 sponsorships, Okay, 750 chances, in collaboration. Collaboration means working with. In collaboration with about 20 schools, from five school boards. Now we'll talk about that in a minute, okay? 20 schools, you can understand. We're not talking about universities. We're talking about high schools. Maybe, maybe, maybe even middle schools. Okay. 20 schools, 750? Well, that would be maybe around 40, 35, 40, 37, 40 for, on average from each of 20 schools. Maybe some schools do more, some schools do less. From five school boards, and we'll come back to school board in a minute. Okay, just one minute. It has also, the program, IPAC, it has also committed itself. It has promised, I promise me, to actively contribute to the implementation of the program in other parts of Quebec. To the implement. We promise to help other parts of Quebec province to do this. Okay, remember, if you don't know, that in North America, usually a city is inside a county, and a city is inside a province. Not like Korea, where Daegu Gwangyeokshi is outside of uh, Gyeongsangbukdo. But, for example, San Diego City is inside San Diego County. Los Angeles City is inside Los Angeles County. All right? So, uh, Sacramento City is inside Sacramento County, et cetera, et cetera. Not every, every city is that way, but mostly. So if Montreal is one city, let's imagine Montreal is Andong. But of course, Andong would be a little bit too small. But let's imagine... Montreal is Andong, and Andong says, okay, we want to help the people in Pohang to do this too. So Pohang, we suggest you do it, the Pohang group, the professionals group, and they say, yeah, sounds good, but we don't really know how. Okay, we're going to send a couple of people over to help guide your team. Of course, you can contact us anytime, but we're going to go over for an orientation day. We're going to share our paperwork and our information and what we did good and what we did bad we're going to help you okay we promise to ourselves we're going to contribute we're going to give in order to help help other people do this other groups will implement this program okay in other parts of Quebec province now it strongly encourages IPAC or IAPGM, Montreal, it strongly encourages other Canadian cities to launch similar program, okay, to launch, to start. It's encouraging other cities. Andong says, Pohang, you should do this. Changwon, you should do this. 
It strongly encourages other Canadian cities to launch a similar program in their regions. Okay? Not only inside of Quebec, we're going to help in Quebec, but we want to encourage people in British Columbia. Vancouver, you should do this. Right? It strongly encourages other Canadian cities to launch a similar program in their regions. And IAPGM Montreal is open to collaboration, open mind. Okay? Yeah, I will listen. I'll think about it. Maybe, yeah. Okay, it is open to collaboration with any city or organization that would be interested in developing such a project. Okay, so we're committed to helping other cities in our province, but we're open minded to help cities even outside our province. All right, back to this key point the program plans to organize 750 sponsorship in, in collaboration with about 20 schools from five school boards. Schools, probably high schools and middle schools. Maybe only high schools. School board. We don't have school boards in Korea. School board is kind of, sort of, something like the Gyoyuk Chung, but not exactly. Because school boards are a different form of government that is independent from the city. Okay, now wait. In Korea, the Gyoyuk Chung is elected, separate from the mayor. And in fact, in Daegu, for a few years, the, what do you call it, Gyoyuk Chojong? The, the Gyoyuk Chung leader and the mayor of Daegu have argued, have fought. Uh, but a school board could be much, much smaller than a city. A school board could be just responsible for one school, or it could be responsible for a hundred schools. But a school board is a separate government. The board means usually five or seven or ten people who are elected, just like a shi just like a city council. The school board usually doesn't have a mayor or a chief. They hire a top staff to do the school business, but the board is elected to make decisions about schools. Should we build a new school? Uh, are there certain rules we have? School boards have a lot of autonomy. They can even choose things like, we'll use this book or we won't use this book. Because the provincial or national education agencies will say, okay, here's four or five books. And the school board could say, we only accept two. Now our high schools can choose A or B. Or the school board could say, we accept all five. Or the school board could say, we accept four, but we don't like this one because blah, blah, blah. School boards have a lot of autonomy. So, in a way, it's kind of like Gyoyuk Chung, but it's actually smaller. And it's a little bit more independent because the uh, Office of Education for the City of Daegu doesn't have a lot of independence from the national government. Uh, it does have independence from the city government, but doesn't have a lot of independence from the national government. But city boards have much more freedom. So we are talking about high school students, maybe middle school students. Okay, questions. We're, we're at 65, 66 minutes here, so it's time to start wrapping up. Let's go back to our earlier questions. How young is young? Well, young means... High school, maybe middle school. Deeper questions. What's this about? It's about an opportunity for young people to discover the advantages, the careers, the opportunities in the public service. What's the main concept? Why did the author write this? Well, the author is talking about what, what we did. And is, in a way, it's a kind of publicity. We're telling people what we're doing so that other people can do it. Now, let's take a moment to look a little bit further down. The writer, Anne-Marie Lafay, is program coordinator, Young Public Servant for a Day, and a member of the board of directors of IAPGM. So, I think maybe she's not a regular public servant, but maybe she is... Uh, a staff for the 
society, or maybe she's a public servant. I don't know. It doesn't say. And the second one, let me move myself down. Gaetan Lebo is program manager, young public servant for a day at the Institute of Administration, okay, and a member of its board of directors. Well, we kind of know that if you're on the board of directors, you can't be an employee. So Gaetan must be working somewhere. Um, but it's not clear here. Maybe Gaetan works at uh, Montreal City Hall. Maybe Anne-Marie Lefay works at the YMCA. We, we, we don't know. Okay, But they're both part of this Young Public Servant for a Day program, and they're publicizing it. They're sharing to the world what it is they're doing. Where was it written? Well, it was written in Canada. Who are the intended readers? Well, this is in this magazine, which all members get. So basically, the intended readers would be public sector workers, right? Professionals in public service, especially people who think, I want to get a promotion. It's probably not being written for the... Uh, cleaning woman and the guy who cuts the grass, they're probably not a member of IAPGM. But uh, the people who are maybe in Korean thinking, you would say, uh, uh level 6 or level 5 and level 4, they're probably in IAPGM. Level 9, level 8, well, maybe. I'll tell you what, this kind of a magazine, if you go into City Hall in U.S., there's probably this kind of magazine, not this one, this one's from Canada, but this kind of magazine is probably in the waiting room outside the city manager's office. The top staff for the city, this magazine's probably laying outside. He reads it, and then he puts it outside for any guest who might be waiting to see him, and they're kind of interested. Um, and probably... Three or five or seven of the higher-ranking staff, the department heads and the maybe team leaders. Like I said, probably uh, Yukup and higher, and possibly Chilgup and maybe maybe Pagup or Gugup. Uh, these people are very possibly members of the society, or somebody else in the office is, and and they like okay, I'm a member and I read it, and now I share it with my coworkers, my colleagues. So who are the intended readers? Well, public service professionals. What are the key words in this reading and what do those mean? Well, we've gone through a whole bunch. So uh, I hope you wrote that down because I'm not going to provide a full list. You can always watch this video again, right? The first time you watch a video, you have to watch it nonstop on the campus system. But after that, you can watch it again. You can slow it down. You can speed it up. Stop and go. And this is also on the uh, uh, YouTube channel if you track that down. Be sure you remember that vocabulary should be in context. Finally, discussion. Do you agree with this concept? Uh, the idea of bringing high school age people into City Hall or into various public service organizations to show them what it is we do and to motivate them to s consider a career in the public service. Would it work in Korea? Well, you know, one of the problems is that in Korea, typically high school students are told, just study. They're not, they only do volunteering and things because they need to do some points for their university application. Five years ago, nobody did it. Nowadays, they kind of need some volunteering for their university applications. But it's very much just I do it because I need to, not because I have a passion to do this or I want to learn something. I just need some points. But maybe if we thought about at the university level, after you finish high school and you're in your first or second year of university, would it work? Does it already exist? Why or why not? Okay, so one thing we want to point out is this is a one-day unpaid visit to see 
We don't expect these young public servants to do anything useful. So one of the concerns I have seen in Korea is that, I'm going to sneeze, is that uh, many staff feel like they have secrets, not necessarily official government secrets, but like, I don't want to see. When I take students to the uh, city hall, like Dalsa uh, Guchung, to do a tour, they don't usually want to let the students see behind the desk in the Minwan Shield because, oh, staff have their shoes changed. They're wearing their slippers and their nice shoes are under the desk and maybe their lunch is behind the desk and they don't want people to see that. It's too secret. <sighs> Come on. We know you're human. So the idea in, in this Canadian system is that students see everything. You know, I'll take you into the, into the staff lunch room for lunch. You're sitting with me behind my desk or going out with me as I do my work. So there should be no shame that you have secrets in your work. If you have secrets, maybe you're doing something bad. So there's this idea of, of can we see what people are doing? Would high school students do it? Maybe not. Would university students? Well, I want to ask you, if somebody gave you the chance... Would you take it? Would you? Why or why not? Is it a good idea for Korea? Why or why not? This is the kind of question that can be on your, on your test. I don't just ask you for facts. I want to see that you are thinking about what we talk about. Okay, last thing here is we're running out of time. What is the reason why it's maybe not needed in Korea? Why is it not needed in Korea? So our last question for here. Why is it not needed in Korea? If we go back to the idea here, whoops, I missed part, to show students some of the interesting careers that exist in the public service, to showcase public management, and to convey that public services can be an exciting place to work. The problem is that in Canada, in U.S., there can be times, that it ebbs and flows, there can be times when we don't have many people applying for public service jobs. You know, last year in Korea, I think the application number to job in Daegu City was something like 75 to 1. They wanted to hire 40 people, and they had something like 3,000 applications. So there was one job for 75 applications. That's crazy competition. 75 to 1. But some years in, in Canada, U.S., the application rate might be only 10 to 1. There's a feeling like the best people don't want to work for city because, A, the city doesn't pay as much. Maybe people think city work is boring. So they wanted to find a way to make people excited so that when they finish high school, they go to university thinking, I want to be a public servant. I want to work in the public service. I want to help people. So that they study things that will help them to be good public servants. They don't just want to go into business and make big money. They want to go into the public service. So the idea in this program is to get young people, before they make their strict career plans, to help them decide they want to be a public servant. And then we can maybe improve the competition rate, get the best people. But right now in Daegu, the competition rate is crazy, and we're getting a lot of maybe best people. Okay, We're getting a lot of people applying who in other times would have gone to the private sector, but now they're looking for security. They're looking for that safe job, quotation, safe job, the career job. They don't want to have high stress. They don't want to worry about getting fired. Well, 
that might not make for the best public servants, right? They might graduate from top universities with great grades, but their motivation is poor. Their motivation isn't public service. Their motivation is safe job. We want people who are excited and motivated about the public service, who want to work in maybe in the charity and the nonprofit that pays poorly, but you walk home with a good feeling like, I did good for society. Or you want to work for City Hall, not because it's safe, but because you want to help people improve their life. So that's our aim. That's why uh, we have these kinds of programs in the U.S. and Canada to show young people what is the public service. And we're at about 78 minutes, I think. It's over time. I'm done for this. Don't be shy to write questions on the Jilmun uh, section of the, the, you know, the Q&A section on the uh, CTL or to write and chat with each other in the uh, discussion board, Jayu Geshepan, or to send me a message on Kakao or in email or in text message and ask me questions and I'll answer you directly or maybe I'll answer in the e-board if it's a question for a lot of people. That's all for today. Young public servant for the day. Young public servant for a day. Would you do it? Thank you.